Now, although air resistance is not in the curriculum explicitly, I have seen graphs asked where they talk about something called terminal velocity and what happens to an object when it is in free fall. Does it keep accelerating indefinitely at 9,8 meters per second squared or does something else happen? So we're going to explore that just a little bit and then um, look at an example. But you do just need to be aware of it. But as I said, air resistance itself is not explicitly in the calculations that you will have to do. Objects only accelerate at 9,8 meters per second squared in a vacuum. The truth of the matter in air it's a number slightly less than 9,8 meters per second squared. And the faster you go, the more that changes because of something called air resistance. So we'll talk about that in a second. Smooth objects have got a minimum of air resistance. Um, they are not, the air doesn't get in their way as much. By something like a feather, there's great air resistance. If, air, if your air resistance is large, and it is increasing, so it keeps getting bigger and bigger, the acceleration will eventually decrease to zero, and then the object falls at a constant velocity, which we call terminal velocity. Let's explore that a bit more. So, we've got a parachutist, he's jumping out of her, she's jumping out of her plane, and her acceleration is 9,8 meters per second squared downwards. As she jumps out the plane, there's only one force acting on her, and that is the downward force of weight. But, the minute she's in the air, a little bit of a force called air resistance, force of air resistance, is going to start acting upwards. It's a small force initially. So she carries on because her net force is still downwards. She carries on speeding up, no longer at 9,8. Her acceleration maybe has gone down to 8,5 meters per second squared. And then because she is going even faster, this air resistance over here gets even bigger and the acceleration gets even smaller. So it's not that she slows down, it's just that her rate of increasing speed decreases until such time as the air resistance becomes so great that it is exactly equal to the weight. And when weight and air resistance are equal to each other, then your upward force completely balances out your downward force and your acceleration is going to be equal to zero meters per second squared. When there's no acceleration, your velocity is constant. That is called terminal velocity. So as her velocity increases, so does the force of the air resistance opposing that downward force. Her resultant force is still downwards, but it is smaller now. Let's carry on and see what the next slide has got on it. Air resistance results as because of collisions with the particles in the air. And the greater the velocity of the parachute is the greater the number of collisions and therefore the greater the air resistance. So as the parachute gets faster and faster, so that air resistance gets greater and greater until the acceleration is zero. The parachute then falls with a constant velocity and we call that velocity terminal velocity. You just need to be aware of that, especially for like multiple choice questions. What happens to the acceleration if I'm doing an acceleration time graph? It starts at 9,8 and gets less and less and less and less until there's no acceleration and that would be the point of terminal velocity. What happens to the velocity? The velocity increases, increases, increases and then eventually the velocity stays constant. So those are the kinds of things you need to be aware of with terminal velocity. Let's look at an example of vertical projectile motion. So we've got a guy standing on a platform and he kicks a soccer ball from six meters above the ground, which we've labeled position A over there, and into the air with an initial velocity of four meters per second. The ball hits the ground at position D after one comma six seconds. The motion of the ball is represented in the diagram below, there, or to the side rather. Ignore the effects of air resistance. Don't write me a story about the fact that everyone's dead. All right, so calculate the maximum height the ball reaches above the ground. Let's look at what information we have got. We know that at the top, the final velocity is equal to zero. We know that to start with, Marshall sends it upwards. I'm going to take up as positive 
and Marshall sends that up at 4 meters per second. And it is up, so it is positive. Um, the acceleration is equal to downwards 9,8 meters per second squared. And the question that they'd like to know is a distance. So I'm going to calculate that. I'm going to say v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as. Substitute in the values. Don't forget that the acceleration must be negative because it's downwards. And we find that the distance turns out to be 0, 0,82 meters. But that wasn't the question. How far above the ground was it? Well, it's 6 plus the 0, 0,82. And therefore, it is going to be total distance. Um, distance above ground is equal to 6, 82 meters. So I had to add 6 onto that. Okay. Calculate the time it takes for the ball to reach that same maximum height. So I'm going to use the same data that I've got over there, and this time I'm going to go v is equal to u plus at. Um, zero is the final velocity, initial is 4. Um, acceleration is negative 9,8, and my time turns out to be 0, 0,41 seconds. So that is the time it takes to get to the top. Then says draw a sketch graph of the velocity versus time for the motion of the ball from the moment it was kicked until it hits the ground. Use point A as the reference point, in other words, zero. Cal indicate all relevant velocity and time values as A, B, C, and D. So let's go ahead with that. So my starting velocity is 4 meters per second. I go to zero. And... It takes me to get to point B, which is when my velocity is 0. So this is B, this is A. It took me 0, 0,41 seconds. It then takes me a further 0, 0,41, so 0, 0,82 seconds to get to point C, which is exactly in line with where I let the ball go in the first place. And then I continue accelerating. We didn't. There was no air resistance, so there's no terminal velocity. I continue accelerating all the way until point D. Now, in order to find out what point D is, we need to establish, oh, well, they tell me it's after 1,6 seconds, so I can just put a 1,6 seconds in there. If you actually calculate it, it turns out, because of the 9,8, to be 1,39 seconds. And let me just show you how you would calculate it. You would say um, the distance is equal to ut plus a half at squared. The distance is, sorry, not the distance, the displacement is 6 meters downwards. As long as you keep your signs right, this will work out. Your initial, your initial velocity is going to be 4, and again it's downwards. The time is what you're interested in, and that's plus a half. Your acceleration is going to be negative 9,8 and you've got t squared. You can use quadratics, equations of motion, and you'll get a positive time and a negative time, and the positive time is going to be 1, 39 seconds. Oh, that you...